So what you're gonna need to be able to do this is you're gonna need some concrete. Let's see here, I have one, two, three, four bags. I got four bags, I'm planning on using at least three. Of course, you need the start of the show, which is the fence post. You need a shovel and a digging bar. Lastly, you're gonna want a wheelbarrow. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and start digging a hole. Notice I have a spade shovel. So you're not gonna wanna use a flat shovel or a square shovel. Because you're gonna use the spade to be able to dig into the ground. And actually, we don't have to handle our dirt twice. We're going to go ahead and shovel from the hole into the wheelbarrow. You want a cylinder is what you want. What you don't want is you don't want a coned hole. And what I mean by a cone hole is think of an ice cream cone. You don't want that. You want a nice flat bottom. You don't have any ice cream to put in the hole. So it's not very fair if you have an ice cream cone hole and no ice cream to put in it. You don't want the ice cream cone hole because in the cold elements, such as like here in Wyoming, when the ground freezes, you're gonna give the ice cream cone shaped concrete areas to push up out of the ground, called frost heaving. We're gonna go 32 inches deep. Why do you need to go that deep? We are actually going below frost line. Frost line's about 24. And then number two, you know, there's gonna be a lot of wind Imagine if we were creating a privacy fence here. That's a lot of wind resistance on this. So if you just go like a foot in the ground, your fence is gonna blow over. This is probably about the worst part. Digging a hole is not very much fun. One thing to remember is that the more effort that you put in is the longer it's gonna last. There's, there's other ways to dig holes besides a shovel and a bar. Uh, it's called like a walk behind skid steer and a sit in skid steer. They rent them at equipment rental stores. All right, it's time to check our depth. I'm actually at 10 feet. No, don't do that. 32, perfect. We're actually gonna leave about a shovel and a half and we're gonna use that to cover back up so that that way after I plant grass seed here, the grass will grow up right next to the fence post. I just wanna try and get all that dirt out as much as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and start with three bags and if we have to use the fourth, that's just fine, but we're planning on using about three. I am using Quickrete in the 60 pound bags. So three 60 pound bags, that means that I'm gonna have 180 pounds of concrete. Don't cheap out on the concrete. That's the foundation of your fence post. If you just go with like one bag's gonna hold it, no you're wrong, you need more than that. Now, this is, this is dry concrete. No, I'm not gonna throw it in the hole dry, but you can, it's called dry packing. We did a whole video on this too. So if you're like, oh man, that doesn't work. Actually, check out this video over here. When you're done with this one, check out that one. Maybe the results will find you astonished. Spoiler alert, we also did foam in that video too. All right, so what I did here, because I don't have a garden hose or a faucet handy, I just went ahead and filled up a five gallon bucket of water. It's about three quarters away full. I'm gonna put about half of that in there to start with. Okay, I did like a little bit more than half. There is a certain texture, there's a certain consistency. I'll try to point it out as I can show you. Obviously, if you can still see gray dry powder, keep on going. So if we can get the whole wheelbarrow to look like that, that's really what we're going for. All my moisture is pretty much gone. It's all up in the concrete. So I'm gonna throw in some more water. Not too much because we're almost there. When it looks like soup, yeah, you wanted to stop adding water just a few minutes before that. So if you end up making it too runny, what you can do is you can break into that fourth bag 
throw in some more concrete to dry it up. Or you could go in the house, you could make yourself a sandwich, then you can come back, mix it up again without adding any more concrete. That's about what we're looking for right there. We're gonna pretend like we're setting this for a six foot tall cedar fence. So we set the fence post six inches under the six foot mark and the pickets will be six inches taller than the post. So that means that six minus 72 is 66. 66 is our grade mark. So the grade mark marks the amount of post that needs to go in the ground or the amount of post that's gonna to need to be out of the ground. See, look at that. See, here's my grade mark. So our hole is too deep. Don't fret, friend. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of concrete in there to get started. And we're gonna push our post into that concrete. So we're gonna, our post will be solidly cased in concrete. We have our post sunk into our concrete just a little bit. Now we're gonna go ahead and just pour concrete around it. Notice how the post is in the center of the hole and the concrete goes all the way around the post. That is one thing that you wanna to try to do with setting a post, is make sure that the concrete goes all the way around. So now I'm just shaking it just a little bit to get that concrete to settle in there. It was a little dry, I could have added a little bit more water. For me, it was just fine. Maybe you might want it just a little bit wetter. I left four inches between top of concrete and top of ground. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is take our dirt that we left, just put it right over the concrete. If you get a lot of wind where you live, the dirt's actually gonna help you. So what it's gonna do is, is it's gonna help suck the moisture out of that concrete and pull it out faster so that this post isn't gonna blow around in the wind. Now I know what you're thinking. When are you gonna tell us about bracing? When are you gonna tell us how to put those fancy outriggers on and where should they go to be able to brace that post? You just put your pieces of wood back away. You don't need them. It's, it's a wasted step. As we're doing this video, just so you know, we have about 20 mile per hour winds, which maybe you can hear it in the microphone. We're really hoping that you can't. Can you just see how that post is just trying to blow over that way? You should probably put an outrigger on there or a leg so it can't fall. You don't need it, I promise you. If you're at all concerned that your post is gonna be too wobbly and it's gonna get blown around in the wind, what you can do is you can take your foot, pack that dirt into that hole onto that concrete, a little bit of compaction on the top, which is gonna hold that post in place. But really, honestly, you have nothing to worry about. What if the post is crooked? As you can see, our post needs to go that way, and it needs to go that way. So I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna put my hand on this corner, and I'm gonna bring it back this direction because I'll be bringing it that way and that way all at the same time. And just tug on it hard. Since this is not man-made, one thing that you want to make sure you're gonna do if you're gonna set a wood post, two sides. You need to pick two sides, like this one and this one, or this one and this one. Those are your two leveling sides, and that's it. You don't go around all four sides because it's a wood product. Wood is not perfect. When the post says it's level on this side, this side reads different. So if you keep bouncing back and if you don't keep measuring off the same side, you're just gonna keep pushing that post all the way around. Make sure to only pick two sides. Now let's check on our grade mark. Uh-oh, I don't see it. Don't worry, don't fret, friend. Okay. I know we just put it in there. So this is why I tell you don't, don't worry about the wind. How much of a time I'm having getting this thing up is crazy. Oh man. Whew. Okay. We're gonna look for a little bit more of a gap. She wants about an inch between top of ground and bottom of fence. Yeah. 
Okay. There you go, now she's happy. So this is the cedar post. Why? Well, because it's a cedar fence. Can't you see the rest of it? If you're gonna be setting a wood post for a cedar fence, here's the two things you should be looking for. You should either be looking for a pressure treated post or a cedar post. Bugs don't like cedar. We showed you guys how to set a four by four cedar post because it's what a lot of you guys are working with. Now we actually never set these. What's better than cedar? One of these, a galvanized steel post master post. Far more superior, and this is all we ever work with when we're dealing with cedar fence. We're gonna talk about why these post master posts are so superior and why that's the pro choice and why it's the only thing we only use when it comes to cedar fence in this video right here. We are Wyoming's fence company and we hope you have a good dang day.